Howdy folks, Jeff Sangstack here. I'm going to show you how to create a shape using compound paths. That is, you take a number of shapes, merge them together to create some other kind of a shape. We're going to build these gears here and we're going to animate them like this to have them animate together nicely. Or you get to the end of the comp and start all over again like that. Alright, so to do this we need to make a new comp. So go over here and click on the new comp icon. You can make any size you want. Let's click OK. And now I want to make a new shape. And to simplify things, I'm going to do a standard default shape. So I go over to the Shape tool here. Right now I've got the Star tool selected like that. And I just double click on it and that creates the default shape. In this case it has the last settings that I use. The size of the stroke and the color of the stroke and the same thing with the fill. I think the stroke is a little large so I'm going to take it down a little bit like that. Not so prominent. There we go. Notice that it's centered up here. It's a little bit off the top. That's just the standard size though. Alright, I want to turn this into those gears that I just showed you over here. We're going to take that star and turn it into this guy here. So to do that requires using multiple shapes and then merging them together. What I want to do is I want to cut off the tops here using a polygon. So I need to add a polygon to this shape group. The group is called Polystar 1 and inside the group is the Polystar Path 1. That's this path right there. So I want to add another path to this Polystar 1 group. To do that I make sure Contents or Polystar is active then I go to Add. And I want to add a polystar. Now, people think there are five shape tools. When you go up here, you see there are five. But there are really only three. Rectangle, ellipse, and polystar. Polystar makes those two guys, and rectangle makes those two guys. So when you go over here and go to add, there are only three shapes, rectangle, ellipse, and polystar. So we click polystar. That adds the star in the middle. Well, first of all, we don't want a star, we want a polygon. That's easy to fix. So just click on this disclosure triangle for the property group for this new one and change its type from a star to a polygon. There you go. What I want to do is I want to cut off the ends here with the sides. Right now they're not pointing the right direction. I need to rotate this a little bit so when I expand it, it cuts off the corners here. So I need to rotate this guy such that this guy will be perpendicular to this line from the center of the star to the point. Since there are five sides, if I rotate it one-fifth of the way, that'll be 72 degrees, which isn't right. I need to do half of that, or 36 degrees. So I'll rotate this thing 36 degrees by clicking down here, go 36. And now you can see that as I expand this, it's going to cut off this corner up here. I'm not sure if you can see my cursor. I'll get the selection tool and study so you can see it a little bit better. So I expand this guy out, you'll then cut off these corners here nice and smoothly. So let's just take the outer radius down here, expand that out a bit. You're going to see that we can cut off the tips there so we can make a gear-like thing, except right now it's awfully messy. To make it unmessy, we need to use a merge paths operator. I'll show you how to do that. So go back up to here where it says Contents Add. Add a Merge Paths, which is right here. It's a little operator that will allow you to merge those guys. It's down below here. It's added below the Polystar 2 right there. And by default, its mode is Add, which means it adds everything together. So it takes those borders, those strokes around the outside, and now it adds them all together, which is not what we want. We want to get rid of those points. And we don't want this stuff pointing out there. So let's just take a look at this drop-down list here and see what else is going on. Let's merge and then add, subtract, intersect, and exclude intersections. What we want to do here is where it intersects. Wherever things intersect, we want to keep them. So here it's not intersecting, and here it's not intersecting. So we want to just keep the intersections right there. And there you go. Right off the bat, we've got our gears. But I want to also have a flat area here to make it look more like a real gear. I can make it round, but I prefer flat here because I want to have other gears mesh into here and be flat as well. So I need to add another polygon. So I go back up here to add and go down to polystar again. Again, a polystar is a star or a polygon. Click on that. And unfortunately, it puts it above the merge paths, which is a little bit of an anomaly. It really should go below. So I'm going to drag it down below here, below merge paths, to make sure that we got that taken care of. And now it looks like what you'd expect to see. Again, it comes in as a star. We need to change that to a polygon. So I go over here and change the type to a polygon. There we go. And I want to expand it out so it makes these areas flat. So you see it's already lined up properly for that purpose. Let me just expand it out with the outer radius here, like so. There you go. So we're going to flatten out those inside gaps there. But now we don't want it to be where it intersects. We want it to be some other means. We want it to be where they match up like that. So let's go down here and merge it together and see what we can do there. So I'm going to go back over here to Add, Merge Paths. And unfortunately, it puts the merge paths in the wrong place. Again, this is an anomaly here. Let's just drag this down below Polystar Path 3, and now they're going to merge together. And by default, it's Add, which is what we want. We want those two guys to add together. So now we have this gear all set up. I'm thinking maybe we need to pull this in a bit and maybe push the points out a bit to kind of make it work a little bit better. 
can always compensate for that by going back to, let's say, the first one here. Go back to Pali Star Path 2, and let's say the outer radius doesn't need to be quite so tight. Maybe push it out like that. There you go. If you take the inner radius of that other one we added down here in the bottom, let's see what that one looks like if I pull that in a little bit. Take the outer radius and pull it in. I said inner radius, but I meant to pull the outer radius in. There you go, like that. Something like that. Okay, now we've got this uh, gear all set up. I want to put a hole in the middle of it just to make it look more like a gear. So let's add an ellipse to create a hole here. Now, so far we've done intersect and add. We're going to do subtract now to create a hole in the middle. So go back over to add, ellipse. By default it'll be a circle, and where is the darn thing? It's because it puts it in the wrong place when you do that. Again, that's one of these little anomalies. Drag it below merge path, and now you can see it. I want to carve a hole there. So I want to merge the paths together again, but this time I want to subtract this thing away. So go back to Add, Merge Paths. Again, it's going to put it in the wrong place. Drag it down below Ellipse Path. And now go here to the drop-down mode. Instead of Add or Intersect, Subtract. And that carves a hole in the middle. And now, there we go. We've got a gear, which is great. I want to change the name of this thing from Shape Layer 1 to Gear 1. So I click on it, press the Enter key, and type in Gear 1. I want to duplicate that. So I do Control or Command D. Automatically increments the number to gear 2, which is nice. If I click on it, you can see we've got two gears now. Great. I want to change the number of teeth of this new gear. So I go up to gear 2 here. I go back to contents. And after we've done all this work, we can actually adapt it. So I'm going to take this first polystar path, which is the star. Remember that? And it has five points. Let's change it to 10. Double the number of points. And right now, yee, it looks terrible, right? But we'll take care of that in a second. Go down to this next one, which is the polygon that pulled in points. Change that to 10 as well. And now you can see that we've got 10 points, but they're not pulled in very well. So let's take a look at the outer radius and see if we can fix that. There we go. Pull that in a bit. You can see now the points are pointed. That's because we need to rotate this polygon a little bit differently. We rotated it 36 degrees before because it was five sides. Now it's 10 sides. So I'll just do the quick math for you. You want to rotate it half the original distance. So I'm going to go to 18 degrees here. And now it'll be flat on the outside. That's good. And with these little angles here, instead of being flat, that's because the inside polygon is still only five sides. Let's go down here a little bit farther to Polystar Path 3 and change it to 10 sides. And now it looks good, but it's kind of, I don't know, too far out, right? So let's push the auto radius in a little bit. There you have it. All right, now I want to take this one down here and make it a little smaller because it's going to be kind of hard to have those guys fit together. So I'll start shrinking it down. Hold on the shift key to constrain proportions there, like that. I want to have it mesh up nicely, so I'll take this guy and pull it down and rotate it. Press the W key to turn on rotation. Go back to the V key for selection and kind of line it up. Rotate it just a little bit more there, perhaps. Back to the V key. There you go. I think that looks okay. It'd be nice to change the colors in this thing. You can do that after the fact as well. So I'll go back to this first one here. Open up gear one there. Open up contents. And we're just going to change the color for the entire Polystar group. So we'll get on here to stroke. Uh, that'd be red instead of blue, I think, just to make sure we can distinguish between the two. Go down to fill. Make that blue instead of red. We can tell what's going on now. There we go. And now I want to rotate these two guys and have them mesh together. So I'll go back here and close that down. I want to have this one be the main gear, the one that drives the other gear. So I want to rotate this one a few times. So I press on gear one here and press R for rotate. I want to keyframe the beginning and the end so they're the same. So it gets to the middle and then slows down and stops and then goes back to the end and starts all over again. So I turn on keyframe so the beginning, like that. I go to the end of the comp, but I want to go one frame after the end, which is a little bit of a trick. What that means is the last keyframe here will be one frame before the beginning again. It makes it go smoothly when you want something to loop like this. So I'm going to press the page down key to go one frame after the comp, which shows nothing at this point. And then add a keyframe there that's the same as this one simply by clicking on this little button add on the keyframe. So now they're equal. Nothing will happen from one into the other. And I'll go halfway into about two and a half seconds there, like so. Now I want to keyframe this to have it be, let's say, rotating four times, for example. So I click over here to 4x instead of 0x. Tab past that. And now it's going to rotate forward, and then it's going to suddenly start rotating backwards, which is not the way things would work in real life. We can make things go a little bit more smoothly by clicking on the word rotation, which highlights all three keyframes. Right-click on one of them and say, Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. So now it'll rotate smoothly goes there and slows down, 
starts over, it gets to the end and slows down, and it will be a smooth restart because we have that keyframe one frame after the end of the comp. Now I want to take that keyframe rotation and have it kind of transfer over to this gear. So I click on R for it. I'm going to put keyframes at the beginning and the end that are equal. So I click on this toggle animation switch, the set keyframes there. Click the end key to go to the end page down once. Add a keyframe there by clicking on this little star. Now I have two keyframes that are equal. I'm going to go exactly to this keyframe there, so I navigate to it by clicking on this little triangle to navigate right to it. And I want to add a keyframe here such that it rotates half the speed of this one. Every time this guy rotates twice, this guy rotates once, because you got five teeth, ten teeth. So this guy rotates twice, this guy rotates once, so we need to have it half the speed. So it's 4x in the middle here. So if I make it 2x, will that work? Of course, now that I'm asking you, the answer is no, of course, because 2x is going to go the wrong direction. Let's just see how that works. Let's see how they're working against each other. Oh, the gears are grinding. So this center keyframe needs to be in the opposite direction. So I navigate to it with this little triangle there. Change it to negative 2x, negative 2. And now it should work, except that I need to make sure I've got easy ease for it as well, or they won't really line up nicely. So I click on the word rotation to select all three of those keyframes. Right click on one of them, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and now they should work nicely. Let's see how that goes. Slows down, and they're now meshed nicely. Very good, gets to the end and starts over again. Oh, lovely. Now, if you know about expressions, you're going, Jeff, why don't you use expressions instead of doing it this hard way? And the answer is I just wanted to show you both ways. So now I'm going to show you how to use expressions. So I'll go back to the beginning here, get this thing loaded up at the beginning. Click on the word rotation. So I clicked on it to select them all, and I'm going to press delete to get rid of all those keyframes. And now I'm going to turn on expressions for this gear number two. To do that, I press down the Alt or the Option key and click on the toggle animation switch, and now expressions are turned on for it. I want to just link this gear 2 rotation to the gear 1 rotation. I do that by using this pick whip tool there. Drag it down there like so. And now they're linked together, which is nice, but they're going to go the wrong speed in the wrong direction. I'll just play it for you. There you go. Wrong speed, wrong direction. Very bad. So we need to fix that. So expressions are this little algebraic formula, or little mathematical formula. So I just need to make sure it rotates at half of the speed of this guy. So go down here and click on the expression. Go to the end here. And I divide it by 2, or I multiply it times a half. So I just divide it by 2, forward slash 2. And will that do it? Again, whenever I ask a question, it usually means the answer is no. So let's just see what happens here. Ah, going the wrong direction. It's the right speed, but the wrong direction. And that's because it needs to go the opposite direction. So I go back over here and click on this. Instead of having it be a positive 2, I make it a negative 2. Divide by negative 2. And click on the Enter key and the numeric keypad to finish that off. And let's take a look at that. Uh, so now it's going the right direction, right speed, but it got a little out of alignment there because it's picking up the exact degrees of this one, and they don't start out in the right position. So I need to rotate this guy, looks like 8.4 degrees in the other direction. Right now it starts off minus 8.4, I want it to start off at zero. So I go over here, click on this, and go plus 8.4. Just happens to be the way it works out in this case. I didn't do plus, I did equal, so let's do shift equal, that's better. Press the Enter key in the numeric keypad, and now I think it'll work. Notice how it's now lined up properly, and there you go. And this is an awful fast rotation, so one of the great advantages of working with expressions is that all you need to do is just change one keyframe when it affects anything else attached to it. So I'm going to change this keyframe here. Navigate to it, click on it to make that active like that. Instead of four times, let's make it two times, 2x. And now it'll be a slower motion, but this guy will pick up the slower speed as well. Ah, beautiful. All right. All right, so that's how you can use multiple shapes and the Merge Paths operator to create a new shape, and then how you can make these gears mesh together nicely.